estamos aquí en una nueva edición de Auto 060, yo soy Javier Mota, estamos de regreso aquí en un nuevo horario y vamos a tener un show muy interesante, vamos a tener el reporte anual de los autos más confiables del 2013, eh, un reporte anual que siempre sale de la firma J.D. Power and Associates, vamos a tener también un par de entrevistas muy interesantes, aquí en Miami se está celebrando el Boat Show y aunque es de botes el show, eh, Mercedes Benz tiene un elemento muy interesante para compartir ahí sobre una asociación que tienen con el Cigarette Racing, de la firma que fabrica botes super deportivos aquí en Miami, así que vamos a tener eso. Vamos a entrevistar también a Ben Ford, vicepresidente de Infinity para todas las Américas, lo que está pasando con esa firma de lujo de la división de Nissan. Eh, un reporte también sobre los, eh, los arreglos que está haciendo la Toyota para... Eh, reparar para hacer un settlement, mejor dicho, un acuerdo fuera de corte con todos los problemas que tuvo con ese, aquellos recall de la aceleración repentina. Eh, algunos reportes sobre lo que está pasando con esas investigaciones que realiza la EPA, la Agencia de Protección al Medio Ambiente, sobre los reclamos de los fabricantes de autos que dicen que tienen más de 40 millas por galón, vehículos que, que rinden más de 40 millas por galón. Vamos a analizar eso. Y en el último segmento vamos a tener en la otra cara de la moneda. Vamos a tener la lista de los autos que efectivamente rinden más de 40 millas por galón y una entrevista de un evento que se realizó en Miami aquí recientemente del Lamborghini Aventador y ya les voy a contar, fue una aventura espectacular porque no solamente vinieron a probar los autos en el autódromo de Homestead sino que cerraron el aeropuerto de Miami para correr los autos pero bueno, vamos a la, al primer segmento, a la primera entrevista de este segmento and we're gonna switch back to English because we have Mr. David Sargent Vice President, Vice President of Global Automotive Research at GD Power and Associates How are you Mr. Sargent? I'm well, thank you, how are you? Excellent, thank you. So we were talking, we were doing, talking in the intro about the show about the, the new report of, um, J from J.D. Power and Associates about the dependability of the new vehicles. And uh, no surprise, I guess, at all. <laughs> Lexus, again, uh, number one, right? Uh, Lexus, Porsche, Lincoln, Toyota, and Mercedes-Benz in the top five. Yes, and uh, Lexus is frequently at the top of the rankings in this particular study. The vehicles are, are very dependable. But, uh, Yeah, Porsche, Lincoln, Toyota, Mercedes, Buick, Honda, all of the brands of the top. I guess, uh, I, yeah, I guess we can say that they're not any bad cars anymore in the market, right? Nobody, <laughs> no, no manufacturer can afford to, to put out a car that is bad because, I mean, nowadays, Um, you can get a, a very, very good car for between $16,000 and $20,000, but when you talk about the luxury segment of the, of the industry, uh, obviously, I mean, cars are re have to be really, really good because competition is fierce. It is, and we've seen the dependability of vehicles get better and better over the, well, over the 24 years, frankly, we've been doing the study. So anybody who buys a three-year-old vehicle today, it's going to be much better than a three-year-old vehicle they may have had five or ten years ago. Uh, in your opinion, what has uh, made this uh, possible? I mean, what, what is, why is it that new cars, modern cars, are more dependable? T I guess technology, research, uh, but what exactly is it? Um, it's a lot of technology, it's a lot of research, a lot of investment in quality, but it's also what you have mentioned, that nobody can afford to build a bad car anymore, because if they do, Uh, consumers will find out about it and they simply won't buy unreliable vehicles and if they do then they won't repurchase that brand the next time so anybody who comes to market with a poor quality vehicle is going to have a very tough time so the manufacturers invest huge amounts of money in making their vehicles as reliable as they possibly can exactly okay so we can can we go a little bit in detail of how this study is is done uh, i know you mentioned it's 24 years now that you've been doing it i guess technology has changed it too to do the study right in the past few <laughs> yeah. years but can you uh, please explain for our audience how your study is done yes this is a study of three-year-old vehicles so we're looking at the vehicles that were first uh, produced for the 2010 model year so three years later We surveyed about 37,000 consumers in the U.S. across all of the makes and models and asked them what problems they had on their vehicle in the last 12 months. And consumers respond to us. We tally up the scores and come out with the results. So this is entirely driven by what U.S. consumers say. It's not J.D. Power's own opinion. Exactly. And um, I'm a little bit surprised or intrigued, I, I have to say, 
think Toyota there, especially if uh, the, the, uh, the study is conduct was conducted in the past three years, because Toyota has had a lot of recalls. And actually, we're talking about, in a later segment, we're going to talk about the settlement for some of the sudden acceleration issues that they had a few years ago. So how come Toyota, even with those problems, is still in the top five? There's a difference between recalls and dependability problems. What we're asking consumers here is to report any problems that they have actually experienced on their vehicle. Now, with recalls, typically very, very few people actually experience the problem. Yeah. But the manufacturer recalls all of the vehicles to prevent other consumers having the issue. So, but when we measure dependability, we're only asking people, did you yourself actually have the problem on your vehicle? And there we find that for Toyota, very, very few people actually experience any of these problems, even though it caused a, you know, a, a huge row in the media. The number of people who actually had the problems was very, very small. Exactly. And then Lexus, which also has had some recalls, but I guess it's the same case. But they have really, I mean, uh, these two brands, I mean, they, they belong to the same manufacturer. I mean, they have really, really taken this list. I don't know how many years uh, in a row they've been, uh, at least Lexus in the first place. I don't know, Toyota the top five at least. Um, I mean, what, what do you see as the main attributes of these cars? I mean, it's really the focus that Toyota puts on dependability. It's their overriding objective when they bring a vehicle to market is that it's going to be extremely reliable for the consumer. They build the entire brand reputation for both Toyota and Lexus on delivering high levels of dependability. So they will do anything they can to ensure the vehicles are dependable and so you know when you've been doing that for 20 or 30 years um you know you typically end up with some very dependable vehicles so i don't think they have any particular secrets it's just the focus that they place on this issue yeah and uh, also the only um, u.s manufacturer in the top five list is lincoln which is uh, mm -hmm. interesting because this is a brand that ford is starting to rebuild i mean they invest in like over a billion dollars um, they started investing that in the, in the past few years and like looking forward. Um, why is the difference between Lincoln, I mean, I mean it's obvious, I mean they're the luxury brand for Ford, but mm -hmm. why is it the difference, main difference between Lincoln and Ford products? Um, right now the, the main difference obviously is that mostly the Lincolns are a more luxurious version of the Ford vehicles, but Ford has a lot of other vehicles that Lincoln doesn't have. It just so happened that the vehicles they, they share platforms on tend to be more reliable and so Lincoln, because they only have those products, tends to score better. Um, but Lincoln is another brand that over the years has demonstrated an ability to provide their customers with very dependable vehicles. Yeah, uh, from the other uh, US manufacturers, uh, GM has the Buick Lucerne, the uh, Chevrolet Camaro, the Tahoe, the GM Sierra, which is uh, pretty much the same uh, pickup truck. Um, Chrysler, I don't see any in the top, at least 20 in the model uh, list. Uh, is there any news from Chrysler in your list, in your report? <laughs> Not in the model list, but Ram performed well this year as a brand. The 2010 light duty Ram pickup was very strong, and that is the majority of Ram sales. So that, that moved the brand up there now um, above the average. So. Although, in general, Chrysler products are still a little bit behind. Um, there's a lot of work going on. They're moving in the right direction. And again, this is vehicles that were originally um, built three to four years ago, and we know that Chrysler's made a lot of progress since then. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, the Ram won the uh, Truck of the Year award at the recent Detroit Auto Show, which, right, I, which, I saw that. which makes uh, I mean, a statement on how, how much they have improved. Uh, any particular vehicle that, that calls your attention in, in this list compared to, I guess, uh, from, from last year's uh, report? I mean, I, I mean, the one that did jump out was actually the Ram, because last year, which was its launch year, it didn't perform particularly well, but Chrysler put a lot of effort into focus on this one product to make it much better, and that, that really turned that product around. We know that they're now doing similar things on their other products, so, but yeah, it was really the Ram of all of the vehicles where we went, wow, that's, you know, that's an amazing improvement in one year. Yeah, absolutely. And then I ran it up the, the top five Porsche, which is also not a surprise. they always been uh, ranking very well. And Mercedes-Benz, right. uh, which is going to be interesting. They're coming up with a new model car, uh, the CLA, uh, a smaller uh -huh. car, cheaper car, $30,000 or under to start with. So it's going to be very interesting to see it in the, in the future reports from J.D. Power and Associates. Yes, Mercedes, I mean, they went through a few problems around five years ago with their reliability, but they've, they've come back very strong, and they're really now back where people would expect 
Mercedes to be, as you say, they're broadening their product lineup. There's no reason to believe that those smaller products won't be reliable as well. Well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, this is uh, Dave Sargent, Vice President of Global Automotive Research at JD Power and Associates. And can you please tell us uh, where can uh, our audience can find more information about um, this study and others that JD Power does? Yeah, all of the work we do can be found at www.jdpower.com. And people will find lots of ratings about automobiles and all sorts of other industries too. Excellent. Thank you very much, Mr. Sargent, and uh, we hope to talk to you soon again. Yeah, I hope so. Thank you. Bueno, ahí tienen el estudio de J.D. Power and Associates. Muy interesante ver cómo eh, la Toyota y la... Bueno, primero la Lexus, la división de lujo de la Toyota, está en primer lugar de este estudio. Eh, ya lleva varios años estando ahí en primer lugar. Eh, el Lexus, Porsche, Lincoln, Toyota y Mercedes-Benz en el top 5. Y luego, bueno, ahí está la lista completa de todos los modelos estudiados. Se entrevistó, como decía el señor Sargent, a 37 mil dueños de vehículos comprados entre el 2010 y el 2013. Y estos son eh, los reportes de los problemas que registraron estos dueños de esos vehículos en este tiempo. Así que a pesar, como decíamos en la entrevista en inglés, de los problemas de recalls que ha tenido la Toyota en los últimos años, eh, la verdad es, y como lo hemos dicho también en otros shows acá, es que los recalls no siempre afectan a todos los vehículos que se mencionan en el recall, que se, son llamados a reparación, sino que apenas una fracción de ellos son los que tienen el problema. Los fabricantes y las autoridades obligan a hacer estos llamados a reparación como medida de precaución. Así que muy interesante este reporte de la J.D. Power and Associates sobre los autos más confiables en el mercado de Estados Unidos para el 2013. Y no se vayan, que cuando regresemos vamos a tener, como les decía, un par de entrevistas muy interesantes. Está eh, celebrándose el auto, el Boat Show. Me vuelvo a equivocar con el Boat Show de Miami Beach, eh, porque es eh, un poco extraño que este es un show de autos y hablamos del Boat Show. Eh, vamos a hablar con Rob Moran sobre el bote eléctrico más rápido del mundo, que fue inspirado nada menos por la tecnología eléctrica de la Mercedes-Benz y también vamos a hablar con Ben Ford, vicepresidente de las Américas de Infinity, sobre lo que está pasando con esta firma de lujo, división de lujo de la Nissan. Ya regresamos, esto es Auto 060, yo soy Javier Mota.